Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at AWS organizations and consolidated billing. Now, I know you must be wondering, I thought this was an S3 section of the course. Why are we looking at AWS organizations and consolidated billing and what do they have to do with S3? Well, in the next lecture, we're going to look at how we can do cross-account access with S3. So how we can go in and use another AWS account's uh, S3 buckets. But the only way we can enable that is by turning on AWS organizations. So I want to just spend this lecture telling you what AWS organizations is and how consolidated billing works. And then in the next lecture, we'll go back to S3. So what is AWS organizations? It's an account management service that enables you to consolidate multiple AWS AWS accounts into an organization that you create and centrally manage. So let's have a look up here. So we've got our organization, and this could be the company that you work for. Then we have our root AWS account. This is our master account. And best practices are, is we use this for billing only. We don't deploy any resources in there. And then within our organization, we have OUs or organizational units. So this might be our finance department. This might be our developers. And this might be our production developers, or this could be our production account, and this could be our test and dev developers. This could be test, this could be dev, this could be UAT, et cetera, et cetera. And the way you apply permissions is by using policies. So just like what we do in IAM, we apply a policy document, and then that policy will then be inherited. So if we apply this policy here to this organizational unit, and perhaps this is our finance team, and we don't want our finance team using something like EC2, so we say, hey, let's block EC2 to the entire finance team, that will then trickle down to all the other AWS accounts and organizational units underneath it. So that's all AWS organizations is. It allows you to have multiple AWS accounts and be able to centrally manage them. You can also do consolidated billing. This is essentially where all your accounts, the fundamental principle behind pricing with AWS is the more that you use, the less that you pay. So if you look at S3 storage, for example, the more um, storage you use, the less and less you pay it comes down in price. Now, when you use consolidated billing with AWS organizations, it takes into account the aggregate of all of your uh, accounts. So the more you use an S3 across the entire organization, the less that you pay. So typically what we'll do is we'll have a paying account in here. This is independent and uh, we would want it to not be able to access resources of the other accounts. Then we have our linked accounts. We've got our test and dev, our production, our back office, and these are all going to be independent. And then you add up the cost of all of these different accounts, and then your bill is um, going to be just say over 10,000, but you're getting the best price possible because you're consolidating your bill under one bill. So the advantages of consolidated billing is it's one bill per AWS account. It's very easy to track charges and allocate costs, and you get volume pricing discount. So why don't we go ahead now and have a look at how we can set up AWS organizations. Uh, you will need two AWS accounts for this uh, in order to do it. You don't have to do this. You can just uh, watch my video. It just means that if you don't have it set up, you won't be able to do the next lecture, which is how you do um, cross-account access using S3. But again, you don't necessarily have to know how to do it. It is a popular exam topic, however. So you need to know the three different ways in which you can do that. But we'll cover that off in the next lecture. So this is a lab and you will need to log into the AWS console. Okay, so I'm going to log into my first account. It's just called A Cloud Guru Account A, and that's at A Cloud Guru. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit next, type in my password. Now this is a brand new account that I just set up a few minutes ago. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to services and you'll be able to find uh, organizations here. Um, so if we just do a search for organizations, it's under the management and governance. You can also get to it if we click up here and go over to my organization. That's another way that we can get to it. So we're gonna load the organizations page. Now, if you've never, if this is a new account and you've never created an organization before, this is how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna go in and click create organization. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and hit create organization. And this will make us the root account for uh, this organization. And you can see that by this little star. So this is the master account. So A Cloud Guru account A, and uh, that's it. Now what we wanna do is we want to invite other accounts. So I'm gonna go in and hit add account, and I'm going to invite an account. I can also create an account within the master account. Because this is a new account, you can see that I have to verify that email address. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. 
So I've now verified my email address. If I click on AWS Organizations again, I should be able to go in and add an account and invite an account. And now I can enter in the email or account ID of the account that I want to invite. So I'm going to invite a Cloud Guru account B to a Cloud Guru. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next and hit invite. And it really is that simple. So now all you need to do is go check your email and click on the link and that will link that account to the organization. Now, in order to see it, you will have to log in to the other account. So let's go in and log into its A Cloud Guru account B at A Cloud and then dot Guru. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And in here, I just type my password and I should be able to sign in. And I've clicked the link in the invite and it's loaded this page. So it says you have invitations to join other organizations. So I'm going to go ahead and accept. And now I'm going to join this organization. So go ahead and hit confirm. And you can see that this account now belongs to that organization. And I have the option to leave the organization as well. I'm just going to log in as the master account. And I've just logged in as the master account. So again, if I go over to services and scroll down to AWS organizations, I should now be able to see those organizations in there. And you can see here, A Cloud Guru account A, A Cloud Guru account B. Uh, so it really is that simple. So up here, you'll notice that we've also got our organized accounts. So in here, we create OUs or organizational units. So we might have one for finance. We might have one for human resources. We might have one for our devs. We might have one for production, etc. And then we can drop our AWS accounts in there. And in here, we've got our different AWS policies. And we can actually apply policies to um, organizational units or to accounts and restrict access. So we could say, hey, I don't want people in my dev account using um, S3, or I don't want uh, people in the finance team um, using EC2. And you do that through a service control policy, very similar to how we use IAM and apply policies to our users, groups, and roles. In AWS organizations, we apply service control policies to our organizational units or to our individual accounts, and then we can restrict uh, access to what those AWS accounts can do. So let's go on to my exam tips. So onto my exam tips and some best practices with AWS organizations. Just remember to always enable multi-factor authentication on the root account. You should always use a strong and complex password on the root account. The paying account should be used for billing purposes only. Do not deploy resources into the paying account. And the paying account is simply the root account or master account. And then we enable or disable AWS services using service control policies or SCP. And we do this either on an organizational unit basis or on individual accounts. So if you don't want the finance team spinning up EC2 instances, you disable uh, EC2 instances using service control policies. So that is it for this lecture, everyone. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, feel free to move on to the next lecture where we're going to look at how we can use S3 buckets across multiple AWS accounts.